Hi everyone, it's Erlene of Erlene Garcia Art and the Hollywood Carney Channel. Today, I want to show you one of the easiest necklaces to make that includes these random beads that you may have lying around and if you put them all together you can make a totally awesome necklace that you could sell or gift to somebody or even donate to one of your favorite charity events so let's get started gather up all of your odds and end beads and you beaters know what those are the ones that you don't put away when you're done creating something fun so this is what this pile is that i have here and then i decided to use some spacers Austrian crystal, some seed beads, and some head pins, tiger tail wire, crimp beads, eye pins, jump rings, and your basic jewelry tools. Round nose pliers, wire cutters, and needle nose pliers. Making this necklace was so much fun that I ended up making four. So hopefully you'll do the same too. So let's get started. You will cut five pieces of tiger tail wire about 14 inches long. String up about 15, 20 seed beads and one crimp. Let's connect it to one of the holes in the jade piece or whatever medallion that you are using. So it should look like this. And I found it easy or easier to connect all five strands first. And that way you can just keep filling them with beads, filling them with beads. Yes. I like to have a feature bead on each strand. So I decided to use the Czechoslovakian handmade bead. And then I chose colors from that one bead and looked in my pile of beads. And then I just started picking up random beads in similar colors that kind of matched. And if it didn't, then I would put in a rhinestone rondelle and voila, it worked. The last bead that you pick up, make sure that your tiger tail wire can go through it twice. So then we'll pick up the last bead, one crimp bead and about 25 or 30 seed beads and you can put them in a little design if you so desire. After you pick up your seed beads, we are now finished with our loop. We are going to go into the crimp bead and then through a couple of beads to hide the tiger tail wire. Pull firmly, make sure the whole strand is taut. And now we are going to crimp the crimp bead with your needle nose pliers, being very careful not to accidentally crimp the seed beads because they are glass and they will break. I like to flip it over and make sure that I get each side of the crimp and that way I know that it is going to hold. And then we are going to cut with our wire cutters the extended tiger tail wire that we left that is hanging off. And when you cut it, make sure that you get flush to the bead. So let's continue with our second strand, making sure that the beads are balanced next to your first strand. Make the same loop. And this second strand will be a little bit shorter than our first strand. And then our third strand, which will be the last one on the edge, will be slightly shorter. So basically you want them to look like a V. These random beads are from different places from around the world. And because they are similar colors, that's where we create the story. And for some reason, they just really blend nicely. Look at that. I love it. The Asian barrel bead I've probably had for about 30 years. The Czech lizard bead is new to my collection. The dragonfly is new. Some of the others, like this one, is just a random glass bead that I had. And there's some coconut shell disc in there too. So this is one of the reasons that I wanted to share this style of necklace with you is because you can put your favorite beads from different cultures all together and it tells a story of all of your souvenir beads from all of your favorite bead shopping days. 
And now we've completed all five of our strands with the center being the longest and then the two next to it a dash shorter and then the outside ones are a dash shorter. So the reason that we have these loops here is that we are going to put some, maybe you have some extra charms or extra beads that you can connect on the head pin and jump ring. And it is very easy to do. It's very similar to making basic earrings, which I will be having a video on that later on. So what we're going to do here, I'm using an eye pin. I put on my little charm. He's one of my favorites. He's a little Chinese mythical hybrid creature. I can't really say the name. I don't want to pronounce it wrong, but it's like Pixiu, P-I-X-I-U. And these little guys are uh, considered powerful protectors for Feng Shui practitioners. Yikes, I can't even say that either with my hillbilly accent. Anyway, <laughs> so let's continue. We are adding a couple of beads on that eye pin, and then we're gonna curl the top in a nice loop, add a jump ring, and then make two other pieces that are shorter and we will connect them to the jump ring and then the jump ring is connected to the loop and the little three charms will dance and we are going to do that to each of the remaining four loops and this really adds like some nice jingly jingly effect to your necklace. OMG, is jingly jingly even a word? Okay, <laughs> so if you don't have charms, you can easily use um, beads and it will give it the same look like this. One side note, whenever you are purchasing charms and you want to sell your necklaces for a higher price, look for charms that are double-sided because it just adds more of a substantial feel and gives it a little bit more quality to your what i like to call art jewelry or an original art piece let's start the sides of our necklace i always like to start with the bottom and then that way for me i can balance out the bottom with the top instead of vice versa i cut two pieces of about 16 to 18 inch tiger tail wire, attached it just like I did with our former strands, and then I worked my way up, picking and choosing random beads, no particular order, and in between each group of beads, I put about five or seven seed beads to create a little design and separation. At the back of our necklace that goes behind our neck, I made two loops the exact same way that we did at the bottom of our necklace for the charms to dangle. So we are not going to have a clasp. We are going to string a piece of leather strap through the back so it can be adjustable for the wearer. Now, what I'm going to do here is make a couple of charms that I want to dangle on the sides of our necklace. And that will give the extra oomph toward the top part here, the chest area. And then at the end of the leather strap, I attached two of those wire crimps and added three dangles on each side. I just thought it would add a little bit of a, a finished look to the back. I will show you how I did it. And it is really easy, and I'm sure some of you already know how to do this, but for the ones who don't, this is the way that it looks. Take your leather and put it into the inside of the coil. Try to push it all the way that you can, and then there's going to be one little um, edge there and we are going to crimp it into the leather and make sure that you do it really firm and make sure there are no sharp edges sticking out. You do not want your customer to complain that something is itchy and scratchy. Now, this is a really cool effect here. This is called a crimp cover. Now for the people who are designing jewelry, some of them, they don't want the crimp 
bead to show. So this open bead is hollow on the inside. We will wrap it around the crimp bead carefully, just like this, slide it on. It may be a little like wobbly until you get the hang of it. And you are just going to close it and make sure that you don't smash it where there's dents. Try to keep it in a the circle bead that it's supposed to emulate. And then just add on your regular beads like so, and voila, you don't see the workmanship. Here's an idea if you wanna make something really quick and you don't have a jade medallion. You can use a Chinese coin. You can use a faux concho. You can use an abalone button. What else do I have there? You can use, oh, these donuts are excellent to make this type of a necklace. And you know, just look in your bead stash and think out of the box. So here it is, it's all done. Look at that, I am loving it, that's fabulous. Also, when you're selling your piece, make sure that you write on your jewelry tag exactly what beads that you used. Chinese crystal, Austrian crystal, Czechoslovakian crystal, turquoise, ostrich eggshell disc, coconut disc. There's all kinds of bone, um, even batik bone, horn, and all of your semi-precious stones. And if you add charms and their specialty lucky charms, make sure you include that information too, because believe me, people love it and there's always a story behind it. And oh, if these beads could talk, then, uh, well, that'll be between me and my bead. <laughs> okay, I think that was probably funnier in my head than the way it sounded, so don't tell mama. Okay, so let's continue and looking at the rest of this necklace. Look at it, I, I love it. Coral, pearl, Czechoslovakian, Italian beads, and ohms and Buddhas. So even though some of the uh, beads are from different cultures, like some of my favorite African beads are in, in this necklace, um, some of the African Hishi copper beads as spacers, mixing it all together creates one spectacular statement necklace. Oh, so as promised, here's another one that I made. I couldn't just make one and once I got started, bam, beads were everywhere. So I was like, let me just make one a little bit more subtle. And then I had my citrine out and with the blonde jade, I wanted to make like all the beautiful champagne colors. So then I made that one. Every time this happens, I make something out of that mishmash of beads and I'm always happy with the outcome. And sometimes those beads that I just throw in a box, I stick in my little travel box that I use whenever I'm on a trip or I go down the street to babysit my grandson or visit my friend. I always have a box of beads, tools, crimps, everything I need just to create something on the go. So let me know what you guys create out of your mishmash of beads. I know that we all try to strive to keep them straight in the shelf, but you know, this happens. These necklaces are great unisex necklaces. Oh, this is a champagne uh, colors that I loved working with, the blonde jade, the vintage bone pieces that I had. Oh my gosh, I loved it. And this one has similar stones in it, except I left all the bright pinks and purples out and the reds, and it gave it a completely different look. And I took a tassel, used it at the bottom and gently wire wrapped it to the jade so it wouldn't scratch the jade. And it gave it a completely unisex look. Can you just imagine yourself wearing this with you know, t-shirt, jeans, and some cool shoes, or just a very simple, elegant attire. So on the back, I used a lobster clasp and about a seven inch chain, so you can adjust the necklace length. Ooh, look at that one. So the red jade is so fabulous in this one. I just love it. And look at the moonstone butterfly. I featured a lot of like hematite, 
um, bronze colors, copper colors, gray agate, rutilated quartz, and tourmalated quartz, and uh, gray spiderweb, jasper, and crackle agate, and copal different hues of lava and plated lava. Oh, I love lava. And lucky silver charms that are like Hamsas and Buddhas. I could go on and on, but if you want to read about it, you can go on my Etsy. I have all the stones listed. And let's take one more quick look at the four necklaces that I made. And they only took me about three or four days to make all of them. So there's this one that we just looked at. And then the blonde one is coming up. Superb, very beachy. And the mudra, a symbolic hand gesture that has the power of producing joy and happiness. And of course, our featured art piece that we designed together. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. And I look forward to sharing some more with you. Have a happy day, bye.